Hello everyone. Today we're making chromates and dichromates from stainless steel by the electrolysis process. We start by making a weak solution of sodium bicarbonate or another salt. Then we use two stainless steel spoons as electrodes. The current needs to be as high as possible. Basically, the iron and chromium alloy gets converted in their respective hydroxides as hydrogen gas gets released. We can see the formation of a dark green-brown sludge which is our product. You may need to alternate the electrodes so that their corrosion stays the same. After some hours when the cell gets too full, we filter the precipitate and start again if we want more. After some time, when the sludge contains less water, we dry it on the hot plate. This will convert the metal hydroxides into oxides and the fine powder can be weighted. In this step, it's important to remember that our solid isn't 100% chromium oxide, so 88 grams of powder correspond to around 16 grams of chromium oxide. Alternatively, you can calculate the yield by measuring out the spoons before and after the process. Then we prepare some sodium hydroxide and a solution of hydrogen peroxide corresponding to how much we need However, we will use more hydrogen peroxide than theoretically needed because it gets partially decomposed by the metal oxides. You can use potassium hydroxide instead to make the corresponding potassium salts, but you will have to fix the stoichiometry then. We dilute our hydrogen peroxide and add it slowly. I then used an addition funnel to limit H2O2 decomposition. Our resulting sludge is then passed through a filter. The sodium chromate formed is soluble in water and should be recolted in the beaker, whereas the unreacted iron oxide stays in the filter. You may need to filter multiple times as the oxide particles can pass through. After filtration, we wash the remaining material with more water to get a maximum of sodium chromate in solution. If you only want sodium chromate, you can just boil down the solution to dryness, but here, we are going to convert it into sodium dichromate by adding sulfuric acid. Chromates are yellow while dichromates are orange. We know the reaction is finished when the color gets a vibrant orange and the pH becomes acidic. If we add too much acid, we will start to form chromic acid. We can then boil down the solution until a precipitate gets formed. Then we cool down the product and filter it.
Sadly, I had a problem with my dichromate, and it was very contaminated with impurities. If you try to recreate this procedure, you should get bright orange crystals. Anyway, that was all for today. Remember to leave a like and subscribe and see you next time.